Hi everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this episode, we're going to learn the two to four player game, Boss Monster, designed by Johnny and Chris O'Neill and published by Brother Wise Games. There are lots of games that take place in dungeons, but usually you're the hero. Not this time. Instead, you're the ultimate villain, trying to protect your treasures from those pesky heroes. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. Boss Monster is played with cards that you should separate into piles based on their backs. We're going to need to remove some of the heroes and epic heroes, so let's flip these two decks over and take a look. The symbols shown here represent the number of people playing, either two, three, or four. Return to the box any cards that show more players than are at the table. For example, I'll be setting up a two-player game, so I'll remove all of the three and four-player cards. Now shuffle and place face down those two hero decks onto the table. Over here, you'll also shuffle and place face down the room and spell decks. Put a space between them for a shared discard pile, and also leave room here. This area is known as the town, and heroes, when they're revealed, will be placed in this area. Next, shuffle the boss deck and deal one boss monster to each player. You place your boss in front of you, but leave lots of room to its left for the dungeon that you'll be building there. The remaining boss monsters are returned to the box. We'll go over the card details later, but for now, just note your boss's XP. This stands for experience. Throughout the video, I will refer to experience turn order. This means the player with the highest XP boss monster goes first, then the next highest, and so on. You may even wish to change seats once the boss monsters have been revealed, so that players can sit from highest to lowest in clockwise order. When there's more than two players, this makes the turn order a little more straightforward. Now each player is dealt five rooms and two spells. Look over what you have, and then each player chooses two of them to discard. But don't reveal them yet. Wait until everyone is ready, and then they're all discarded at the same time. Also, each player has an option to build one room. Again, don't reveal which room you want to build, just place it face down, and then in experience turn order, they're revealed and built. Building rooms is a very important part of the gameplay, so even though we're in the setup, let's just take a quick moment and look at how it works. There are four different types of rooms, ordinary monster and trap rooms, as well as advanced monster and trap rooms. Advanced rooms have a gold backing to their symbol and ordinary ones have a silver backing. Additionally, each room may contain one or more of the four different types of treasure, which will be shown in this corner. The Dragon Hatchery is a good example because it has one of each type of treasure shown. When adding a room to your dungeon, they must go to the left of your boss monster. So the first room you build would go here. Now, when building new rooms, you will either place them to the left of your leftmost card, or you will place rooms on top of an existing room. This becomes especially important because at most, you can have five rooms in your dungeon at a time. Ordinary rooms, the ones with the silver symbols, can be placed on top of any room in your dungeon, even advanced ones. But advanced rooms must be placed on top of an existing room that share at least one treasure symbol with it. So the all-seeing eye could not be placed on top of this card, but it could be placed right here. But during this setup, if you build a room, it's very straightforward. It has to be placed here. When the players reveal their first room, any that have a when you build this effect are resolved in XP turn order. And that's the setup. During the game, heroes will arrive in town looking to go on quests for specific kinds of treasure. Fighters like amazing weapons, thieves crave gold, and so on. If you have the most of a treasure that a hero is looking for, it will get lured into your dungeon. If your dungeon is dangerous enough, it will be defeated there and you'll claim its soul. However, if it makes it all the way through the dungeon, you'll take a wound. Claim enough souls and you win the game. Take too many wounds and you're eliminated. The game is played over a series of rounds that are divided into five phases, starting with the beginning of the turn phase. Complete this by revealing one hero per player drawn from the ordinary hero deck. In future rounds, this deck will be empty, and at that point you'll draw from the epic hero deck. Revealed heroes are placed in order, first beside the hero deck, and then outward. So in a two-player game, it would look like this. Now each player draws one room card. 
but no cards or abilities can be used during this phase. Next is the build phase. In experienced turn order, players will place one room face down in their dungeon where they plan to build it. No rooms are revealed until each player has had a chance to place one face down room. But you are not required to build a room if you don't want to. As long as rooms have not been revealed yet, players may play spells or activate card abilities. In the bottom left corner of your spells, they will show either a hammer, axe, or both. During the build phase, you may only play spells that show a hammer, like these two. While choosing and placing the room that you want to build face down, you're considered the active player, and that means all of your spells and abilities will resolve before anyone else's regardless of what your experience point level is for your boss. Everyone else trying to play spells and abilities while you're the active player will then resolve theirs afterwards in experience point turn order. Once all the rooms have been placed face down, players reveal them simultaneously. Spells may no longer be played. Now we resolve any when built effects on the revealed rooms, and we do that in experience point turn order. Each boss also has a unique level up ability which is listed here. This will only activate once in the game during the build phase that you have five face up dungeon rooms. If more than one player maxes out their dungeon size during the same build phase, you guessed it, they resolve their level up ability in experience turn order. But remember, the level up ability only resolves once during the entire game. So let's say this room somehow got destroyed. Placing a fifth room here would not cause the level up ability to resolve again. As a reminder, players may wish to put a coin on their boss monster as a reminder that their level up ability has been used. After building, it's the bait phase and spell cards and room abilities cannot be used. Instead, each player should look at the revealed heroes in town. They have a symbol right here in the top right hand corner showing what kind of treasure they want. Starting with the hero closest to the hero deck, each player checks their dungeon to see if they have any symbols that match. You'll notice I spun around the cards in this dungeon so it's a little easier for you to follow. If you have more matching treasure symbols of the type a hero desires, you place that hero at the far left of your dungeon. If there's a tie between players for most treasures, the hero stays in town. So this cleric is looking for holy relics. We have two holy relic symbols here in this dungeon and none here. So the cleric is going to leave town. When a hero goes to the dungeon, slide any remaining heroes back towards the deck. The fighter here is looking for fantastic weapons, but we have two of those symbols in this dungeon and two of those symbols in this one as well. That's a tie. The fighter is gonna stay in town. It is possible for a single player to get multiple heroes. For example, if this dungeon had had an extra sword in it, then the fighter would have gone there as well, but it would be placed behind the heroes already there. Before going to the next phase, instead of a fighter being in town, let's pretend there had been a thief. This thief is looking for bags of gold. And this dungeon has two of them, this dungeon has none. So the thief would have gone here. Now it's time for the adventure phase to begin. In experience turn order, if a player has a hero at their dungeon, it will move right through each room. As it enters each room, any applicable ability written on the card is applied, and then the room deals its damage, which is shown right here. This damage will add up as the hero moves from room to room, and if a hero exits a room with damage equal to its health, which is shown here, it will die. So for example, when the cleric enters the goblin armory, it will take one damage. The ability here says that monster rooms adjacent to this room gain plus one to their damage. So now he'll take two plus one in this room when he exits, and that totals four. So the cleric has been defeated. Defeated heroes are placed face down in a scorekeeping area to the right of your boss. This symbol on the back represents a soul that you have collected. To win, you need to collect 10 souls. Defeating heroes is great, but what happens when you lure a hero that isn't defeated by your dungeon? For example, this thief has eight health. He'll take three damage here, an additional one damage here. But if the hero reaches your boss monster, instead of flipping the card over, it stays face up in your scorekeeping area and you've taken a wound, 
one for every blood symbol shown here. Collect five wounds and you lose the game. The player who is currently processing heroes through their dungeon is considered the active player. And just like during the build phase, spells and abilities are resolved in the same order. Except this time, spells need to have the axe symbol on them in order to be played during the adventuring phase. Once a player has resolved all of the adventurers at the entrance of their dungeon, the next player in experience point turn order resolves all of their heroes. Then it's time to go on to the end phase. Now, any rooms with end of turn effects are resolved. Also, it's possible for a room to have been deactivated. For example, this free spell allows a player to pick a room and deactivate it. That just means you flip it over. Now the room doesn't have any abilities and it can't damage heroes. But at the end of the turn, all the activated rooms are reactivated, which means they get flipped back over. Now it's time to see if the game is over. If a player has five or more wounds, they're immediately eliminated from the game. But if you have less than five wounds and 10 or more souls, then you've won the game. However, if all of the remaining players meet either the winning or losing conditions, then players will total up the souls they've collected and subtract any wounds that they have. The player with the highest value is then the winner. If there's still a tie for the highest value, then those players check to see who has the lowest experience points boss monster and that player wins the game. And that's how you complete a full round of Boss Monster. But there are just a couple of extra details that we should go over. Epic heroes cause two wounds if they make it through the dungeon. But if defeated, they will provide two souls. When drawing your initial hand, if you only draw advanced rooms or all of one treasure type, you may shuffle your entire hand back into the decks and draw a new one. Sometimes during the game, a room may be destroyed. This just means it's removed from the dungeon. If this leaves a gap, then slide all of the cards to the right to close that gap. If a room is destroyed and there was one underneath, it becomes the room for that position of your dungeon. But ignore any when built effects that it may have. Those will not activate. If a hero is in a room when it gets destroyed, it immediately moves to the next room in the dungeon, ignoring any effects of the newly revealed room underneath. And that's how you play Boss Monster. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. And I wanna say a very special thank you to the people who donated during our previous fundraiser for this season of Watch It Played. One of the perks is that you could vote on two of the games that we would feature this season, and Boss Monster won one of those selections. And consider subscribing to our channel because in a future episode, we're gonna do a full playthrough of Boss Monster so you can see how the game works and also participate in the gameplay. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.